What is up, y'all? The fantasy football train is chugging into week eight. That can only mean one thing. You know what it means. It means I've spent the better part of the last 36 hours in the utilization bunker looking for all the data that you need to help you keep your fantasy season on track and crush your league mates. I have got three takeaways for you today, so let's dive in. The first player we're going to talk about today is Justin Fields. If you don't have one of the top six quarterbacks in fantasy football right now, you need to consider adding Justin Fields. It doesn't mean you have to start him next week, but with the way the quarterback position has played out this year, he could still be very valuable to your team as a QB2 or as a potential trade component that you could use later. So when we look at the quarterbacks this season, Matthew Stafford, do you want to start him? Probably not. Do you want to start Aaron Rodgers? Probably not. Do you want to start Russell Wilson? Probably not. In fact, I would start Justin Fields over all of those guys immediately. But even if you've got someone like a Dak Prescott, you've got someone like a Tom Brady, you're still going to be starting them, but you're just a little bit concerned. So let's talk about Fields and why I'm so excited about him. And it all starts with the last four weeks. This guy is averaging 10.3 rushing attempts per game. And I think this is something that could really stick. And there are three reasons why. First, we have Fields leading the entire NFL in scramble rate. And that's really his baseline. 18% of the time he drops back to throw, he is taking off on a scramble. That's been really nice. But the best thing is what just happened this last week. And that leads us to number two, the fact that the Bears have finally shown us they're willing to integrate fields into the designed running plays. He had 28% of those on Monday night against the Patriots, something that we've been begging for. If you look at players like Jalen Hurts, you look at players like Lamar Jackson, they're around the 25% mark, and it makes such a huge difference. So if we can have fields continue to scramble, be one of the league leaders there, and if he can be integrated 20, 25% of the design rushing attempts, that would be huge. In fact, we had the Bears coordinators, we had the Bears head coaches come out and tell us last week they were going to go with a hot hand approach. We just didn't know that Justin Fields was potentially going to be part of the hot hand equation. We saw David Montgomery have a season low in rushing attempts, and it wasn't because Khalil Herbert's role grew. It was because we saw Justin Fields' role in the running game improve. And then the third and final point, this is the Bears' identity. They've shown us they want to run the football in close game scripts within three points, excluding overtime play. They are running the ball 10 percentage points above the NFL average. If you look at their wide receiver room, it also makes sense. You know, they're going to need to win through efficiency via the air. Now, I know what some of you guys are thinking. You're thinking, Dwayne, like Justin Fields looks terrible throwing the football. And you're right. I can't argue with that. He's on pace for 25, about 2,500 yards passing, 12 passing touchdowns, which aren't things that we like. But you just got to look back one year to remember that Jalen Hurts was roughly at 3,200 passing yards and 16 passing touchdowns. And he finished as what? The QB9. Why was that? Because he averaged 9.3 rushing attempts per game. Where is Fields at over the last four games again? 10.3. And we can't just box Fields in, you know, as being someone that can never improve. There is a chance that as they run the ball more, teams want to defend that run, that we could get more efficient quarterback play out of Fields. But even if we don't, he's probably set up to have far, far, far more QB1 finishes than what we thought were possible two or three weeks ago. It won't be every week, but he's going to give you plenty of QB1 value. And if for some reason he takes that step forward in the passing game, we could be talking about someone that could change your season at the quarterback position. So Justin Fields right now is available in over 70% of Yahoo leagues. That should not be the case, folks. Go grab him. And again, even if he's going to be your QB2, this is a guy that you can move in a trade or worst case, you know, you've got a guy like Brady and you just decide, you know what, Fields earns his way into your lineup. And remember, this is just a season where quarterback play has been especially bad. So it's not necessarily something that we want to avoid. And, and in, in the past, we may not ever want to roster a QB2. We want to spend that position somewhere else. But given the way 2022 is playing out, it's a smart move. So go get Justin Fields. The second player we're going to to talk about is Kareem Hunt. He is the ultimate by low candidate running back in fantasy football. A lot of you are hurting. You've lost Javante Williams. You've lost Rashad Penny. You've lost Brees Hall. Maybe you were getting by on Clyde Edwards Alaire giving you that RB2 utility. Now he's a backup to Isaiah Pacheco. So what are you going to do? Let's talk about why Kareem Hunt is the guy you want to target. There are three main reasons why. First of all, his utilization hasn't changed. Number two, there's an opportunity for regression in his target share. And then finally, the trade rumors are swirling. So talking about the utilization, 
It's exactly the same as it was last year. Over the first several games of the season, when you had Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt healthy together, guess what percentage of the carries Kareem Hunt got? 30%. Where is he at this year? 30%. What was his other role? Playing on passing down, seeing the long down on distance, the two-minute offense. Guess who's getting over 80% of both of those categories? Kareem Hunt. So the role hasn't changed. The Browns still see Kareem Hunt in the same way. It just so happens that he hasn't gotten the targets that we've seen in the past. And that really brings us to the second point. His targets per route run are sitting at 15% this season. His average over the last three years, 22% targets per route run. So just with a little bit of regression back to the mean, there's a really good opportunity. Amari Cooper is a difference. We haven't seen Kareem Hunt have to deal with a target alpha in the past. He's at a 27% target share. But after that, there's still room. David Njoku is playing well. He's at a 19% target share, but he's hurt with a high ankle sprain. So that could open up some opportunity. And Donovan Peoples-Jones is really more of a down the field threat. He is at a 19% target share. But after that, really no one else is involved. And so on that alone, looking at his history that we talked about, there is the room for him to regress back to the mean, which is going to help you score more fantasy points. And then finally... The trade rumors that we talked about, they are going on. We've got the trade deadline coming up. We could go from Kareem Hunt being someone that is more of a high-end RB3 that can give you spike value weeks of RB1 potential to him being ranked as an RB1 starting tomorrow. If he were to land with the Buffalo Bills, for example, we would never hear from Devin Singletary again. It would be like the Bermuda Triangle. His family members would be looking for him. They would be calling Kareem Hunt is triple the running back that we have with Devin Singletary. The Eagles would be another good example. He may not fully take over everything from Miles Sanders, who's played really good this year, but he's a better running back. He's a more complete running back. He could play the passing downs and carry the ball inside the five-yard line. So there's just so many outs. And again, even if he stays in Cleveland, we know that he has outs to still make do on his fantasy potential. So the only reason you might fade this advice on Kareem Hunt is if you just think that he's washed. But he's only 27 years old, and again, he is a pass-catching back. So those kind of backs typically can have a little bit more of a prolonged career. Think back to Matt Forte. Even when he was no longer good as a running back, he was still really good in the passing game. And Kareem Hunt, we haven't seen any sort of indication that that sort of thing is going to happen with him. So he makes the perfect kind of target because no one is really thinking about him. He's only had one top 12 fantasy finish on the season, despite all the other underlying indicators telling us we should be buying on Kareem Hunt. Those are the perfect kind of guys to target in a trade. In fact, I love getting Kareem Hunt as a throw-in player. I don't even let my opponent know that Kareem Hunt is who I'm after. I may, be try I may trade for another player player and then just say, hey, throw in Kareem Hunt. In fact, I'm about to give you another name of someone that you should be fading that you might be able to flip for Kareem Hunt and something else together. So that brings us to Deontay Foreman, the ultimate sell high candidate of the week, the opposite of Kareem Hunt. He doesn't have the underlying data points telling us that we should be buying. He did come through with 118 rushing yards and a touchdown. And because the market is so hot, because of all the injuries we talked about earlier to Brees, Hall, Rashad, Penny, and others, it's a great time to dump him on an opponent and you can pick up something else. So the utilization was just not there for Deonta Foreman. Before Chuba Hubbard left the game in the fourth quarter with an ankle sprain, he had only accounted for 35% of the snaps and only 33% of the rushing attempts. It was Hubbard that was the number one. Hubbard is the guy that the team has a draft pick invested in. So if we take the fourth quarter away, you lose 45% of the snaps we saw from Deonta Foreman. Secondly, the Panthers are not a good offense. I know they came through against the Buccaneers. It was a great story, a good run defense, a team that should have beat the Panthers that was heavily favored, and they still managed to come through. So it's a great story, but it's not likely to continue. This is a team that's running the ball 20.1 times per game and non-overtime play. That's the last in the league. So even if you manage to hit and Foreman overtakes Hubbard and we just have kind of a split what are you really getting? Are we hoping for 10 or 12 carries a game on a bad offense? This is also an offense that is only scoring a touchdown on 13% of their drives. That's 30th in the NFL. So a team that doesn't run the ball a lot and a team that doesn't score points, no thank you. We do not want to be partaking in the Carolina Panthers backfield. We want to sell Deonta Foreman. So now your only job, if you have Deonta Foreman or you just want him off of the waiver wire, is to go find that team in your league that needs an RB2, really prop up the 118 yards rushing and make a sell. In fact, I would go after Kareem Hunt for Deonta Foreman. But the cool thing about it is you can probably get Kareem Hunt 
and a little bit extra. And again, remember, don't make it like you're coming after Kareem Hunt. Make it like you're coming after something else. Or even, look, I see you need the RB2. I don't need it but I would like to take someone like a Kareem Hunt back in it. And maybe you even pick up a draft pick next year if you're in a keeper kind of league or you're in a league that you guys trade your draft picks. If you're playing in Dynasty, folks will probably have a little bit different opinion of Kareem Hunt in a Dynasty league. They're probably going to be a little bit higher on him, but it's still worth a try. So whether it's Kareem Hunt, whether it's another piece, Deonta Foreman is a guy that you want to move as soon as you can and maximize your returns. <laughs> 